Hello, and welcome to another episode of Adaptation Podcast Vlog. I'm your host, Doran Roofer, and today I'm going to be dreamcasting Dragon Riders of Pern. Now, the problem with Dragon Riders of Pern is that it's a pretty long book series. It spans quite a bit of time. And even if I just did the trilogy set that is really considered Dragon Riders of Pern, there's still like a hundred and a half characters. That's not even probably a big enough number. So I'm mainly going to focus on the characters in the first book, Dragonflight. First up is our main character, the heroine, who's named Lessa. She is described as a petite girl with childlike features and thick, dark hair. I imagined an actress who is short but has really striking eyes. So I choose Grace Phipps. She might be considered a semi-unknown actress, having been in not a lot of notable things, and a lot of times being like the friend or a side character on like Nine Lives of Chloe King, which sadly only lasted a season, and Vampire Diaries. But I've always liked her. I've always liked what I'd seen, and I'd really like to see what she could do with something more of a bigger starring role. And anyway, look at those eyes. Next up we have Flar. And excuse me if I'm mispronouncing everybody's name, but everybody's got a bit of an apostrophe in their name because, the, like him, he was born Falernon, but when you become a dragon rider, your name gets shortened, so I'm sure that I don't know how to pronounce any of these names. But he is a dark-haired, young and strong dragon rider with amber eyes. About 32 turns, as they call it, which basically just means years of age. I imagine him being kind of a muscular guy, not like big Thor muscular, but at least, you know, pretty built, with like dark features and someone who might tower over Lessa quite a bit. And for him, I imagined Brandon Routh. Now, I can only imagine the groans that just happened as I said that. I know Brandon Routh's kind of gotten a bad rap, but honestly, I think that he's a really good actor. I just think he hasn't always been in the best roles. If you don't like him because of Superman Returns, blame the film, not the actor. So besides Flar, we have Fnor, who was born, and I'm gonna say this wrong, Fomanoran. <laughs> So he is the half-brother of Flar. So he should look a little bit like Brandon Routh, who I cast as Flar. And he is what I imagine kind of a kid brother. Not that he isn't strong and can't stand on his own, but he still kind of has that, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, young whippersnapper type of look, you know, compared to Flar. That's right. I did say it. And in looking online, I noticed that a lot of people thought Liam Hemsworth would be a really good choice for the part. And although I tend to agree with that, I also just feel like Liam Hemsworth has been in just a lot of things lately and he doesn't he doesn't need this role i'm not sure i even want him really so instead i was thinking of somebody more along the lines of robbie amell yes he was kind of a nickelodeon kid with true jackson vp being the first time that i saw him but i think you know in the in the time between then and now he's really grown when i imagine him in this role i just see him fitting it just really well and i think next to brandon ralph i think that they would look really good together that sounded really weird i'm gonna go with it now those are the main characters, so now I'm going to go to somewhat lesser characters. This one I feel like I have to do, because even though he may not be a huge part of the book, which seems really strange at first, he's integral to at least the beginning. So we're going to cast Fax, who is the villain-ish. Uh, he's the main source of anguish at the beginning of the book. His rich living has made him a bit fat, greedy, and he's just an overall ruthless person. He was tough to cast, really. I, I kept bouncing back and forth. Uh, I'm not totally settled on my decision, but the person I thought of was Kelsey Grammer, because he could probably play a really cunning and villainous person who also has like a bit of a lazy or gluttonous side and uh, can still try to take Brandon Routh on in a sword slash knife fight. Knight? Sword slash knife fight. Then we have Lady Gemma, one of Fax's many wives, uh, and she is mother to his sole heir, pretty much. The way that Lady Gemma is described, it makes her sound like she's a bit above the childbearing age. And, you know, it's probably a little dangerous that she is with child. It seems like she's pretty gaunt and maybe even a bit sickly. In fact, I don't think really takes care of his women. Um, I wanted to cast Helen Mirren for this part, but... I was wondering if maybe that was just a bit extreme. So I would also suggest Jane Seymour, who might also be on the side of extreme, but when you look up actresses in their 50s, it's like these days they don't look like they're in their 50s anymore. So I wanted somebody who kind of really made the point. So now we're getting into even more minor characters. But when I was reading Dragonflight, I just I had to cast them. So we have Argyll and Slell, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that but when you only see it written, you don't know. To me, I see them as a bit of a Laurel and Hardy type of thing. And if you're too young to understand that reference, Google is your friend, people. Google it. <laughs> so for this pair, I see Christopher McDonald 
for Argyle because he's kind of got a stern look to him, but he's a little goofy. And I, I could see him kind of being that laid back, like, I don't want to bother people, but at the same time, like, Leslie, you need to do this. And then for Slell, you gotta have Steve Buscemi. I just, I think he'd be amazing as like the dozing and then bickering kind of guy. It'd be good. Now we have Lytol. He was a dragon rider um, and had a short name, but I'm not gonna try to take the Y out of Lytol. So many of the drawings of Lytol seem to show him as a gray-haired man, and that doesn't really matter to me because um, the way he's described and then seeing how people have drawn him based on how he's described, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I just see Bruce Campbell as this character. So even though he's not a huge character, I just needed to say Bruce Campbell, Lytol. Fantastic. Now the last character that I'm going to cast, he's kind of just a shadow of a character in the first book, but I know how much of a larger role that he plays in the later books. So to quell all the anger you might have with me in not dream casting him, I'm just going to do it based on what I've read. And I don't mean read in the book, I mean researched. So we have the character Robinton. Like I said, not a huge character in Dragonflight, but he becomes pretty much the central character in the rest of the series. He is a master harper, or as I would think of him, like a bard. He travels all around Pern throughout the books and catalogs what people have and even warns people of oncoming dangers, and he's just sort of... I want to say he's kind of the storyteller. I might be getting that wrong. Please correct me if I am wrong. So the later version of him seems to picture him as a gray-haired man. Um, but besides that, the main part is that he has an amazing melodic voice. This one I pondered for a while. And although the guy I'm casting isn't really elderly in age, I think he could work, especially if the movies went on to show past, present, and future Pern, he'd be able to kind of span all the time, do young and old versions of himself. So for that, I cast Timothy Omenson. So he has this medieval look to him. He's kind of got the shoulder length, wavy hair. He just like looks really good in like a tunic and things like that. And he has a fantastic voice. And if you don't believe me, you need to go watch Gallivant, and you will understand where I'm coming from. So this role would be a tad more serious than than being a bit of a, like, a goof, as he was in Gallivant. But I know, based on having watched Psych, is that he can also do a really good, like, deadpan, serious guy. And because of that, it's, I, this guy has range, trust me. He'd be fantastic. Now, of course, I said that was the last casting I was going to do. So you will have noticed that I didn't cast anybody as voices for the dragons. I think I would rather have them be a little bit more like R2-D2, where we can't really understand them. Maybe they make some grunts and whatnot, and then the characters around them, with their reactions or in repeating what they're saying, they tell us what they've said. I just, I can, I just imagine the, you know, actually casting the dragons just going really wrong. I don't know, it worked for Dragonheart. I'm not sure it would work for this. So that's all the characters that I'm going to do for this. If you want me to expand to the other books as well and get into things like Jackson's generation, who is Fax's child and such, then please let us know. You can comment below or find us on any of the social media platforms. So leave us some love or some disagreement. We want to hear it all. So until next time, this is Zora Riffer signing off.